Hello, in this video we are going to add an enemy for the bat, something to chase after the bat um, and eventually make it lose some lives, okay? So the first thing we want to do is we want to add a new sprite. Now I'm going to select from the library but again if you've got your own assets you should be selecting upload sprite from file. Um, but I've not so I'm just going to choose a sprite from the library. Uh, which one should I choose? There's absolutely tons of them, but I think I'm going to go for the ghoul right there, okay? That's going to be the one for me. So I'm going to double click, and there we go. I've got a ghoul. Now, automatically, you'll notice it's potentially a little bit too big, so I'm going to click on the shrink button, and then I'm going to, a bunch of times, click on the ghoul um, to make him nice and small in comparison to, well, around about the same size as the bat-ish. Technically, you could maybe argue that a ghoul should be bigger than a bat, but we're not going to go into that one. Okay, so we've now got a ghoul. I've got its own different um, work area here where you can add some code to it. So the first thing I would like to do is I would like to say when the green flag is clicked, the idea is we're going to go back to title screen. Therefore, we want to make sure that is hidden like that okay um, next one we would like to say when we do go on to level one though we are going to when backdrop switches to level one we are going to show up there we go so we've got them showing up now now we also want this ghoul to be moving around the place okay so i'm gonna say that we would like to be forever and then motion moving 10 steps is ridiculously fast, so we're just going to change it to one step instead, okay? So my ghoul will now be moving one step all of the time. Now I'm also going to say what else do we want the ghoul to, because we don't just want the ghoul to, as soon as it comes on, just move into a straight line and then just kind of stop there. We want it to be moving around doing different things, okay? Um, we want to give the impression that the ghoul has got some level of intelligence about it as well, okay? Um, so let's see, what can we do? So I'm going to say again, when the backdrop switches to level one, on, and then we always want to do this so it's going to be forever and then we want to let's have a look we'll point him towards and you've got drop down arrow on the point towards um, our hero the bat there we go so point towards bat one so now it's always going to be facing that way now let's give that a little bit of a try out so let's see how that works but I don't think it's going to work too great though but new game there we go um, and then the bat kind of goes like that. It's not the end of the world, maybe. Um, but it doesn't exactly look like um, the greatest thing in the world ever. Um, especially just going upside down. So let's do something about that. Now, first of all, we don't want the ghoul to be going all crazy, going upside down. So we'll click on the eye on the ghoul. And then we'll set that rotation style just to there. So the ghoul will no longer um, kind of do that. So it look a bit more realistic now. There we go. That's not too bad. Now we do have, though, uh, the ghoul is going through walls um, and just kind of chasing. And it's maybe not too fair. Um, and it's, well, potentially you could argue that's okay. Um, but I'm not going to go for that one. Okay, so I'm going to say that we would like to after, well, we're always going to point, but then we're also going to, let's have a look. We're going to wait. Um, we're going to wait maybe a couple of seconds, as in two, and then we might, uh, what else could we do? We could have him turn in. Let's see. Turn 90 degrees so let's see how that plays now so it just kind of gives it a bit more almost unpredictability although that goes ridiculously fast though it doesn't really look so it just kind of looks like he kind of well i'm not going to say what it looks like he does um but it's let's see let's put another wait one second in there and then now let's see it so he kind of turns around for a second and then changes mind so it adds a bit of erraticness to the ghoul okay um, which technically means the game's a little bit easier but the idea is that we might have more than one enemy on the screen chasing us at that time okay um, so let's go with that 
Now, what else might I want to do? Now, this ghoul, uh, because I've used one of the scratch options, has more than one costume. So I could also click on show, well, that's not show, or looks, sorry, and then go to next costume. After one of the times I've waited, go on to the next costume. And then let's see what that does. So are we switching? Yep, there we go. There's the other costume, so it's looking a bit more menacing right there. So it adds kind of an extra graphic to the game. Um, and makes it look a little bit nicer. Um, and again, we should have more programming skills with this. Now, what we also want to do is, again, depending on your game, how you want to play it, I don't really think it's fair that um, the ghost can go through the walls. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make sure that I've got another, let's see when backdrop switches to level one, um, then we want to make sure that it's forever and then if then so forever if we touch the color and then the color that we set our wall which was that gray i move my mouse over it and press the button then what we're going to do let's have a look we are going to motion and we are going to turn 180 degrees so face in the opposite direction and let's give that a go Let's see, let's try and lure the ghost this way. Oh, oh, I'm glitching out there. I'll have to fix that. There we go. So the ghost can no longer go through the walls either. Now, one of the reasons as well that I did add that in where he turns a different direction for a second is if all your ghosts end up pointing towards the bat all of the time, uh, if you've got more than one enemy, they all kind of just kind of congregate in one area. They all just kind of pick each other up and it doesn't look as good. It's not as menacing. You want ghosts, different ghosts or different enemies to stay in different areas of the map. And they'll do that by doing this. So imagine if you had another three or four ghosts on the screen, say one starting in each corner and one in the middle, maybe, then um, it's going to go over there and it's going to be quite a difficult game. And it's not like you can lure them all over to one single corner and then go and get everything else. Um, that's quite annoying. Uh, we'll have to fix that, I think. Uh, but again, it's that idea um, that you're going to have glitches in your game. That's really annoying. Um, but yeah, it's up to you guys to fix those glitches using the techniques that we have used previously. For example, when he touches that colour, you don't just turn 180, you also move as well. Um, I hope this has been an informative video. Please, if you wanted to add another ghost um, or another enemy, then you could potentially just right click and duplicate. And then I've got two and then you could duplicate again and then I've got some more. Um, so let's have a look. Let's do that. Now, really, they should move in different ways, though, I think. Um, but we'll see how it goes. So now we've got a much more challenging game with ghosts that are glitching out all over the place. Uh, which is not great um, but again if you put that code in like we did with the bat to make sure that the bat bounces off successfully then you'll be absolutely fine um, so thank you very much for watching this video I want to move them ghosts um, please leave any comments that you have um, and I hope it helps you out in creating your maze game thank you very much